Hare Krishna, we are continuing to read from teachings of Queen Kunti. We are on prayer four. We have been reading from the purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. So I'll just read the prayer, which is, uh, which is in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text 21. Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord, who has become the son of Vasudev, the pleasure of Devki, the boy of Nanda, and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan, and the enlivener of the cows and the senses. So this is Kunti Maharani's prayer. Continue reading from the purport. Kunti Devi therefore is pointing our attention toward Krishna, the Supreme Person, who is Alakshya, invisible to all. Who is that invisible person? Here, Krishna. Oh, Krishna. One may say, there are so many Krishnas. Therefore, Kunti Devi says, I am offering my prayers to Vasudev, the son of Vasudev. There are so many Vasudevs. No, Nanda Gopako Maharaya. I am praying to the foster son of Maharaj Nanda. In this way, she three times points out, here is Krishna. So Kunti Maharani, she is telling who is the Supreme Lord? Who is she praying to? The Krishna, who is the son of Vasudev, who has been taken care of by the uh, Gopa called Nanda Maharaj. So she's giving us clearly uh, the identity. She's, give, she's informing us clearly the identity of the Supreme Lord. Krishna officially takes birth as the son of Devki and Vasudev. But in his childhood, he enjoys the company of Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. This is Krishna's pastime. Ananda Leela Maya Vigrahaya. Krishna's pastimes are all jubilant. So this is Krishna's Leela, that he's born to Devki and Vasudev, but he's taken to Gokul, where in his childhood he's with Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Maya. All Krishna's pastimes are jubilant. All are jubilant. Ananda Mayobhya Sat Vedanta Sutra 1 1 12. He is by nature full of bliss. That's Krishna. He's full of bliss. We shall never find Krishna unhappy. Krishna is always happy. And whoever associates with him is also happy. Hmm? So Krishna, we never see him in tension, worried. No, although he did such wonderful, wonderful feats, we never see him unhappy. He's always happy. So if we want to be with, we want to be happy. We just have to associate with with him. You know, we say right that uh, association is uh, association is like a crystal. It reflects whatever we or whoever we associate with. We associate with people who are unhappy, we will become unhappy. We associate with people who are happy, we will become happy. So the happiest person, the happiest person is Krishna. So we associate with Krishna to become happy. How? How do we associate with Krishna? Hearing and chanting. Krishna is absolute. There is no difference between his name and his leelas his pastimes, his qualities, his form. It is absolute. So there is no difference. So therefore, he's known as Govinda. The word go means senses. We are looking for sense gratification. And if we associate with Krishna, then what will happen? We shall enjoy our senses abundantly, just like the gopis who are dancing with Krishna. We, that's all we want. We want to enjoy our senses. We want that. But the, the way if we want to enjoy our senses unlimitedly, then we just associate with Krishna. Thus, there is no scarcity of sense gratification. But this sense gratification in associate with, association with Krishna is not gross sense gratification. Rather, it is spiritual sense gratification enjoyed in the spiritual world. 
Ananda Chinmaya Sad Ujwala Vigra Hasya. That Ananda or pleasure is not the third class Ananda we enjoy with our bodily senses. So enjoying with Krishna is not, uh, is not like we are enjoying our body, you know. We like to enjoy our body. We like to enjoy our senses. We like to eat something. We like to see something. We like to hear something. But when we, in, we enjoy with Krishna in the spiritual world, it is ananda chinmaya sad ujvala vigrahasya. That ananda or pleasure is not third class. Huh? What we are doing is we are enjoying with our bodily senses. Such bodily enjoyment is not ananda, but illusion. What is the illusion? We are thinking, I'm enjoying. But that ananda is not factual. Why? Because we cannot enjoy this material pleasure of the senses for long. Everyone has experience in this material pleasure. Uh, we, we all have this experience that material pleasure comes to an end. But spiritual enjoyment, however, it never ends. Rather, it increases. That is the difference. Ananda chinmaya sad ujwala vigrahasya govindam adipurusham tam aham bhajami. Brahma Samhita 5.32. Therefore, we have to associate with Govinda. So our senses, whenever we are trying to enjoy with our senses, how much can we do? We like to see something, for example. How much can we see? We like to see a TV show. You know, we might watch it for one day, two days, three days. But then after we watch it for many, many times, then we are like, oh, I don't want to watch it anymore. You know, if we continuously keep just watching that TV show because we like it, we're like, no, I want to see something different now. Now this thing does not give me, give me pleasure anymore. Then we say, I want to eat something. We like a particular food and it's our favorite. So whole day we keep eating it. That's the only thing we eat. We'll be sick of it. We'll say, I don't want to see it anymore. That's how material pleasure it, it comes. Uh, it, uh, it's temporary. It's temporary. It gives us pleasure for a short time, but if we continue doing it, we don't want it anymore. But Krishna, Krishna, the more we hear about Krishna, the more we uh, chant his names, the more we want to do it, the more pleasure we feel. It keeps on increasing. It does not decrease. So the spiritual enjoyment increases. And therefore, we have to associate with Krishna. And in that way, we will experience Unlimited enjoyment. Here also it is said, Govindaya Namo Namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances to Govinda. The Krishna consciousness movement is so sublime that it puts one directly in contact with Govinda. Directly in contact with Govinda. The worship of the deity of Krishna in the temple is also direct contact with Govinda. Shivrikrahardana Nityanana Srinaratan Mandira Marjanado Guru Ashtika 3. Guru Ashtika is the Guru Ashtika, the prayers that are composed by Shila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, and it is sung uh, every morning for Mangal Arti in all the Iskon temples. Except in uh, yeah, for Mangal Arti, when the deities are woken, except in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Guru Ashtaka is uh, chanted before the Mangal Arti for Shila Prabhupada. And for Mangal Arti, the Vibhavari Shesha is chanted in Vrindavan temple. So the Vigraha, the deity of Krishna, appears by Krishna's mercy. Because Krishna is alakshya, invisible. He becomes visible to give us this facility to see him. It is not that Krishna is stone, wood, or metal. Krishna is always Krishna. But because we cannot see anything beyond material elements, like wood, stone, and metal, he appears in a form made of these elements. But he is neither wood, metal, nor stone. When we associate with the deity, we associate with Krishna personally, because Krishna is invisible, 
he very kindly takes a form that is visible to us. This is Krishna's mercy. Do not think, oh, here's a stone Krishna. Krishna is everything. And therefore, Krishna is stone also. But he is not the kind of stone that cannot act. Even in the form of stone or metal, Krishna can act as Krishna. And one who worships the deity will perceive that. Swayam eva svaruti adaha. The deity, although apparently stone, may speak with a devotee. There are many instances in which this has happened. So Krishna, he's invisible to us. Then how will we understand who's Krishna? So he takes a form by which we can see him, by which we can reciprocate with him. We can increase our devotion. So he takes the form of the deity. The deity is made of stone, wood, and metal, or you know, some material elements. Why? Because that's all we can see. We can't see spiritual with our material senses. We can't. We are unable to. So Krishna, out of his mercy, out of his mercy, he takes the form of the deity. That is Krishna himself. We at our level might not be able to understand it, but the pure devotees, when they see the deity of Krishna, they see Krishna. Shla Prabhupada, he saw Krishna there. He would speak to the deities. He would make sure they're taking care, well, well care of. The standard has to be all nice. He said, this is Krishna himself. So, uh, and the deity, the, the pujaris who worship the deity, they, they will, uh, they have so many instances where they speak about that, how the deity reciprocates with them in so many different ways how the, the deities are reciprocating, especially the deities of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani in, in uh, Mayapur, in, uh, in the Shimanta Dweep in Mayapur. Those deities are very, very reciprocal. Even the Lord Nishingadev deity in Mayapur is very reciprocates many pastimes. And even we have so many different, like Sakshi Gopal, the deity walked. To give witness, he's called Sakshi Gopal till today, or Kheer Chor Gopinath. The deity stole the Kheer from Adhavendra Puri, and so the deity is called Kheer Chor Gopinath. You know? So the pure devotees, they, they understand that this is Krishna, and Krishna reciprocates. So Krishna is invisible. We can't see him. We, we can't see him. We have these material eyes, material nose. We can't see him, speak to him. But out of his kindness, he takes this uh, form of a deity. Out of his kindness. Otherwise, we will not know who God is, how God looks. So out of his kindness, he's giving us this opportunity. That is his mercy that he's giving us this opportunity. I, so Prabhupada goes on, I am very pleased, therefore, when my disciples nicely dress the deity, offer the deity nice footsteps, and keep the te temple very clean. Sri Mandira Marjanado, Marjana means cleansing. Whether one dresses Krishna or cleanses the temple, the spiritual benefit one receives is the same. Don't think, I'm only a cleaner, and he's a dresser. No, the person who is dressing the deity and the person who's cleaning the temple are the same because Krishna is absolute. Therefore, one should engage in Krishna's service in any way and one's life will be successful. This is the Krishna consciousness movement. So Krishna is absolute. He's not limited. You know, he's not limited. So whatever service we are doing for the pleasure of Krishna, as long as it's for the pleasure of Krishna, it's the same. You know, it doesn't matter the service. It is recommended. It is an authorized service under the instructions of the spiritual master. It's for the pleasure of Krishna. That is, uh, so that's why Prabhupada is saying, therefore, one should engage in Krishna's service in any way. And one's life will be successful. So we want success of our life. We, we want success. We feel we've taken this human birth and need to have success of this human life. Then 
engage in service of Krishna in any way. We do not have to say, oh, I don't know how to do this. So what can I do? No, there's, there's something else that I can do. So find that and do that for the pleasure of Krishna. You know, hearing and chanting, hearing and chanting is a service to Krishna. So serving the deity is service to Krishna. Speaking about Krishna is service to Krishna. So we'll stop here for today. Continue with it tomorrow. Um, continue. Yeah. Um, you, I'm sorry, do you have any comment or question? No, 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 no. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so very much. Very nice explanation. Oh, yeah, Prabhupada writes everything very clearly, you know. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening in and joining in. Hare Krishna. Kunti Maharani ki jai, Shla Prabhupada. Kunti Maharani ki jai, Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.